thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video we're going to be pulling a bit away from the unit reviews and going back to the channel's roots, which would be uh, doing commander reviews or list build reviews, really. So if you are if you haven't seen these types of videos from me before, I essentially take one of the commanders that's available in the game, and I start off by taking a look at their attachment and then breaking down their tactics cards to kind of get a feel of what it is their game plan is. And then we design a list around it to try and really lean into those synergies and talk about, you know, possible uh, changes or pairings that you could present with this list in a competitive environment. And in this video, we're going to be talking about one of the newer commanders that I'm extremely excited about for House Lannister, and that's going to be Kevin Lannister, Protector of the Realm. Kevin Lannister is an infantry attachment commander and brings the order Lannister Supremacy. Uh, this triggers when an enemy completes an attack on this unit. You target the attacker, they suffer one panic test with minus one to their roll and plus one to wounds on failure for each remaining rank in this unit. The other ability that Kevin brings along is called Might of the Throne. This uh, it, this just states, each time a friendly NCU claims the crown, you may replace that zone's effect with Kevin Lannister's unit performs one attack or charge action. So much like his brother Tywin, uh, Kevin brings the, uh, the Lannister's namesake ability, uh, Lannister Supremacy, which is, is extremely powerful in this new uh, environment of A Song of Ice and Fire that we're in. Uh, as the Cool Men You're Not has kind of stated, which I feel like they're, they might be getting away from a little bit, is that the lethality from the upfront combat has kind of been pulled back in the game. But uh, Panic is the other way that you can try and balance that out. And Lannister Supremacy, just being able to have a massive negative a potential massive negative stacked on the mod, on the morale test or the panic test and then having all these extra wounds stacked on top of it makes the the uh, Lannister supremacy really potent and it really punishes your opponent for coming into you in combat but then as opposed to Tywin who kind of forwards his game plan by enabling his his cards with threaten uh, Kevin ends up bringing that might of the throne ability which uh, kind of puts him in this position where he is a much more aggressive commander and can do things like if you want to lean into the panic game you can but uh, he also can take that crown zone and turn it into another attack so in just looking at his attachment i think we're going to be kind of settling kevin into this really melee focused list so let's take a look at his commander cards and see if uh that kind of synergizes with what we're thinking here the first commander card that kevin brings to the lannister deck is predictable maneuvers this triggers at the start of an enemy turn you target one enemy combat unit and one enemy ncu if either unit performs an action this turn, before they resolve that action, one friendly combat unit performs one attack, maneuver, or retreat action. So we've seen predictable maneuvers before with Free Folk in Mance Raider, but I don't think we've seen it anywhere else in the past. I, for whatever reason, I just I feel like there's one I'm missing, but I can't quite place it, but I could just be thinking of a card very similar to it. At any rate, uh, predictable maneuvers in a Lannister list is quite interesting, especially when we're looking at Kevin, who has this idea of already kind of forwarding a more aggressive plan with being able to get some extra attack actions out of his commander attachment so with this you can it with it predictable predictable maneuvers is interesting with lannisters in that lannisters do have this element of control within just their base tactics deck and with with kevin if you're pointing his build in a certain direction you can get some pretty valuable activations out of something like predictable maneuvers to like when 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 free folk do it there's a good chance that they don't have the best or most valuable activations to be doing doing it with in a Mance Raider list, since his lists are typically a lot more wide, and they're just about more bodies and less value, or less quality, I guess. Whereas with uh, predictable new predictable maneuvers in a Lannister-based list, you can get some pretty valuable activations out of just this the extra attack or maneuver and retreat, I guess. Like, I, I probably wouldn't be retreating unless I really absolutely needed to. It's a cool option to have, but I'm mostly going to be looking to position for a better charge or uh, get an extra attack action once I'm dug in. So with uh, the way the game's the, the way the game works, you, you could actually force your opponent to a point where when they only have one 
one combat unit or one NCU or, you know, whatever, when, whenever you're trying to get this to fire off and stop your opponent from doing something, they could actually just not activate something because they're too worried about the type of attack they're going to get hit with. So uh, Predictable Maneuvers is a very interesting card that can play in a lot of different ways in a Lannister list. Next up, we have Seeing Their Flaws. This triggers when an enemy combat unit completes an action, that enemy becomes vulnerable and panicked. You attach this card to that enemy until the end of the round. While attached, uh, while Kevin Lannister's unit is attacking that enemy, the enemy loses all abilities and cannot be targeted by friendly tactics cards. So seeing their flaws is another card we've already had appear in the game with Alice or Thorn. And with Kevin Lannister, I guess in Lannister in general, Vulnerable and Panic seem to go a little bit further uh, in this army where we have, uh, you know, Vulnerable and Night's Watch is also pretty valuable as well. But um, with Panic, we have Lannister Supremacy, Lannister Justice, Vicious in a lot of different places. So uh, making a unit panicked is, is pretty intense, especially if you're trying to push some extra damage to get Kevin Lannister's unit unjammed or just kind of plow through whatever he happens to be engaged with. It can push damage through something that's uh, that's heavily armored and make sure that uh, you're getting the most out of any panic checks you might be inflicting on the unit. Again, if you're using this to kind of defend Kevin Lannister's unit, uh, he can you can make sure that if they have if that unit that's engaged with him happens to have any cool defensive abilities, you just get to shut those off. Whether that comes from tactics cards or uh, or other abilities that the the enemy might the enemy unit might have. So seeing their flaws has uh, a lot of really great potential in Lannister. Not just getting vulnerable and panicked out from uh, just from a unit kind of closing in, especially if your opponent's trying to like not bait you out so much, but kind of start the peace trade asymmetrically, where they throw like a really cheap unit that you know it it might you could maybe one shot it with the right kind of combat situation but having vulnerable and panic make sure that something like that can happen um you can just say okay you did your maneuver march or whatever and now i'm gonna panic and vulnerable you so when i charge in it's gonna hurt a lot more than what you thought it was um otherwise this is just another again i i can't emphasize enough that making getting kevin lannister in a unit that is very combat focused based on his commander card is really important and seeing their flaws makes sure that his unit doesn't get jammed by anything that's more teched into dealing with um that's more teched into dealing with uh good combat like think of veterans of the watch if you're shutting off disrupt and counter strike they really aren't getting a whole lot done especially when they have vulnerable and panic on them in addition to lannister supremacy on top of that so i think like if you take if you're thinking about units that are uh, a little bit harder to get through based on their innate abilities or not innate abilities but their abilities in general um seeing their flaws will help you get there Kevin's final card is an oldie but a goodie. I think a lot of Lannister players might want to play him just because of the reintroduction of this card, and that's going to be Wealth of the Rock. Uh, this triggers when an enemy is performing an attack after rolling the attack dice. You target the defender. If you control the crown zone, the defender gains plus two to their panic test roll. And if you control the coin, the defender gains plus one to defense dice rolls. If this targets Kevin Lannister's unit, you count as controlling both zones. So I think Wealth of the Rock was something that many Lannister players lamented the 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 exit of, but uh, bringing it back with Kevin feels like it's in a good spot here because uh, Kevin Lannister, his if it were, we everything we've seen so far between tactics cards and attachments say Kevin Lannister wants to be in the mix, he wants to fight, and making sure that you have something like Wealth of the Rock in your pocket to make, if your opponent's putting any kind of real big melee pressure on you, uh, you can make sure that you're not failing panic tests if your opponent's manipulating those, and you can have the extra defense, the extra plus one to your defense dice rolls to mitigate sundering or to mitigate a massive amount of attacks that your opponent might be throwing at you. And that's, you don't have to worry about having any zones to make that happen. This is beneficial on other units if you're planning around taking some of those zones and trying to make sure that Wealth of the Rock goes off, because I think that your opponent's going to want to try and keep the crown zone away from you. So, 
with you kind of with, with us kind of already having that in mind our opponent doesn't want to give us a free attack all the time uh we can try and build around making sure that we at least get the coin to have wealth of the rock go off and also think about the list building perspective in that we might want to stay away from lower morale units because our opponent will be likely crown zapping us to mitigate having to get that attack because honestly if you if you think about it in the sense that putting kevin lannister in a unit that's really good at fighting they almost are going to have the effect of the crown anyways when we take it or well we'll have the effect of the crown when we take it because we'll be attacking and pushing them to a panic test and just getting some extra combat damage in there too so uh that's just a, an interesting way to think about how we are going to be playing kevin lannister and some of the interest some of the mind games that might be happening while we're playing when it comes to zones but wealth of the rock is definitely a, a welcome card in his arsenal and i'm sure many lannister players are happy to see it back so to get around to list construction, the first thing I want to do is find a unit for Kevin Lannister to to find a home in, and there are definitely some combat options available in the Lannisters. We've got like Warrior Sons, Red Cloaks, um, the, you know the the, the um, Honor Guard of Casterly Rock, I think is what they're called that I haven't quite talked about just yet. But I am going to be reaching for a unit that I've already that I recently had a video discussion on, and that's going to be the Golden Company Swordsman. For seven points, we get a unit that's speed five and has the tactical strike melee ability that hits on threes and has a seven five four decay. They've got that four plus defense save and a six plus morale. They base it have sundering and then while we control the missive on the tactics board we're gaining we're rolling our highest attack die values all the time and then we have iron resolve that just states we gain plus one to panic test rolls and suffer minus one wound from failing panic test rolls so the reason why i like kevin in this unit is that we do get some innate defense against panic checks so we we have iron resolve right there to deal with that the other thing that is important about this unit that I had mentioned frequently in my video on reviewing this unit was that this is an unconditional combat unit. There is no, there's no thing you need to do in order to make them good at fighting. Uh, of course, if you're down ranks, you would want the missive to make sure that you're rolling your highest, rolling on your highest ranks. But they have base sundering, they're hitting on threes, and their defensive saves are pretty good. And when we think about uh, wealth of the rock going on this unit, making them essentially morale three, and then having a three plus defense save, is is amazing as well. And getting the extra attack from the crown zone on these guys is going to do quite a bit of work because they're hitting on threes, rolling seven dice at full ranks. And Lannisters have plenty of ways to keep this unit full. And uh, they're also, you know, something where Lannister supremacy probably is going to be more likely than not going off on minus two or minus three for the unit. So I think this is a really good place for Kevin Lannister in that he doesn't need to negotiate how to f get good melee attacks out of this unit. They just have everything good right off the bat. So now that we've got Kevin Lannister's unit sorted out, we need to start loading his list up with combat threats because I don't want to try and find, I don't want to waste points on superfluous activations here just for activation's sake. I want to get some really good quality attacks to make sure that predictable maneuvers is going to pay off massive dividends wherever I decide to place it. And I also value in, especially in a Lannister list where you're kind of, you're, we're going to be playing a little bit more narrow on list, in list size with this one based on what I want out of it. So I do want to have some cavalry to have some maneuverability to go for certain points that might be a little bit more difficult to reach. And I was definitely waffling on whether I wanted Knights of Casterly Rock or the House Bolton Flayed Men, but I decided to go for the House Bolton Flayed Men here um, for multiple reasons. First, they're they, they can get engaged in combat and still be extremely effective, where I think the Knights of Casterly Rock really want to be plowing through units and moving on to the next one. And in order to make that extremely effective for them, I feel like, in order to make that happen for them on the regular, I feel like I need to be uh, putting the mountain that rides inside the Knights of Casterly Rock. But with the House Bolton Flayed Men, you get vicious, you're getting critical blow when you charge, and you have intimidating presence, so you're throwing out like negative three panic tests, and they're suffering an extra wound for any kind of failed panic test they might have. And their defensive stats are really great too. We've got a three plus defense save with a six plus morale. Now, in order to try and turn up 
their combat capabilities and kind of spread out the damage a bit, I've decided to put a Clegane Butcher in the in the unit. And for two points, he brings the order Spread Fear. So when an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test, you target one other enemy unit within long range of this unit. It suffers one panic test with minus one to their roll for each remaining rank in this unit. And on a failure, it suffers plus one wound. So uh, we also get the weakened resolve ability that states each time an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test, that enemy becomes weakened. So what the Clegane Butcher brings is the Flayed Men typically are going to be able to pick and choose their battles with their maneuverability. And if they're going after the low-hanging fruit of uh, like worse morale stat units, then they're likely to get them to fail at minus three. And then they'll have Spread Fear go off, and that can try and put some more damage in some of the other units that we might be engaged with. Because when we have a, a more narrow list, I want to be doing more work with less with fewer units, right? So Spread Fear makes sure that I get some extra damage where it might not have, uh, where where they might not have had that coming to them in the first place. If I would have had something like Knights of Casterly Rock, and we can resolve just make sure that the Flayed Men stay, stick around a lot longer because the three plus defense save is already hard to get through, and having weakened on top of that, where if they're getting the first charge. Well, of course, they'd be getting the charge on the unit or getting in combat with the unit. So they fail the panic test, they get the weakened token, they're not getting rerolls, and then I force them to reroll successes. Make sure that the flayed men stick around for quite a while. It's a 10 point unit, but it does a lot for that. They are much more likely to have failed panic tests with the unit they're engaged with and crush a lot of damage. And with the Clegane Butcher, they're doing more damage outside of their own combat to try and help free up some of my other units, and Weaken Resolve just keeps them around a lot longer. So for 10 points, I feel like this is a pretty justified unit for what it's bringing to Kevin Lannister's list, especially when we consider predictable maneuvers. Like if you're firing off predictable maneuvers with Intimidating Presence and Vicious, and you haven't, for whatever reason, triggered Spread Fear, it's just more proliferation of damage with just one card and outside of activations. So I think it's, I feel like this is a good package. So the next unit that I want to pull into this, to this list is going to be the Red Cloaks. So for six points, we get a speed five unit that has a four plus hit on their melee with a seven, five, four decay stat, kind of the same, the same decay stat, at least as the uh, Golden Company. But then they have a four plus defense save, six plus morale, same as Golden Company exactly. The two abilities that they bring or they bring two abilities, and the first one is Fearless Avarice. This uh, states that while you control the coin, this unit suffers minus one rune from failed panic tests, and the Lannister Justice ability is almost notorious at this point, even though it's been pulled back quite a bit, um, but not enough in my... Well, not enough. I think it's been pulled back into a functional zone. It's not overly functional. But Lannister Justice states that while you control the crown, each time this unit performs an action, before resolving that action, one enemy unit within long range suffers one panic test with minus one to their roll for each remaining rank in this unit. So this is... This unit is much in the same way in the list for the same reason the Flayed Men are. They're very they're inexpensive in relation to much of the other things in this list. They're survivable with Fearless Avarice as long as I have the coin, which I will want to have to try and make sure that I'm getting the most out of my Lannister tactic deck and Wealth of the Rock when I need it to not be on Kevin Lannister's unit. Controlling the crown is a big deal for this list. Um, at least right now, because I want to make sure I have access to the crown to take attacks with Kevin's unit, and having the crown to make sure Lannis Lannister Justice goes off is the same reason why I included the uh, Clegane Butcher, is making sure that I can put damage into places where other units are kind of squinched, squished up, right? So if I happen to have something like the crown, or not like the crown, if I just have the crown, um, and I've got a panic check coming from Spread Fear from the Flayed Men and a panic check coming from Lannister Justice onto a unit that Kevin haps happens to be engaged with. When Kevin finally activates, uh, he won't. He might just be able to get out of that combat due to a bunch of panic chest tests that have happened, or he will have very little work to do in order to clip through that unit and move forward and uh, kind of just keep pushing through things so it's a way of trying to really laser focus like a doomsday device on a unit that kevin lannister is engaged with that your opponent like they're just not going to last very long in my opinion i think whatever you put into his unit it's going to be very difficult for that to last more than at least one round because we're going to be throwing so many panic checks and extra damage at them that they just might not be able to to hold it off 
Now, in the theme of trying to push forward that combat, I think the Red Cloaks don't quite get there on their own, that they need a little bit of help to become a little bit more effective. And I'm going to go ahead and add an attachment to them, and it's my favorite Kingsguard by far so in 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 this iteration of the game and that's going to be Mandon Moore. For one point he gives he modifies their melee ability with dominance of the crown. If you control the crown zone when this unit is performing a melee attack, this attack gains plus 1 to hit and sundering. So we're taking the red cloaks from 4 to 3, which is really good. That's a, a huge bump in in performance and giving them sundering now makes them an extremely dangerous combat unit. They're not just like making a bunch of damage out of Lannister Justice. They're actually putting some workout with their melee attacks so man and more as long as we've got the crown make sure that uh we're not going to be having any issues with putting making this unit feel more dangerous than what it actually is so my final combat unit is a little bit more of a wiggle unit and this is going to be the lannister guardsman so for five points it's speed four it, it the long sword attack is better than it used to be with hitting on fours having a six five four decay so the decay isn't super duper sharp uh, they have a 3-plus defense save and a 7-plus morale. That 3-plus defense save is really what we're trying to lean on with them to keep them around. But they do have the Order Lannister Supremacy, so it tr the, the, the we've already went over it, so I'm not going to go over it again. But um, the, the big thing is, like, we want these guys to kind of sit on an objective and exist. And if my opponent comes into them, they're going to get punished uh, not just by moderate attack abilities, probably, like, I would say middle-of-the-road attack ability, but they're going to be hit by that Lannister Supremacy, and that's where we're going to get a lot more damage through. So if we need to have a unit kind of come and bail them out, they'll already have taken some damage from Lannister Supremacy and maybe a little bit from the attacks. But essentially, Lannister Guardsmen are just going to be something that's there to hold some of my backfield objectives. I did have an extra point to kind of wiggle with, too. So I put an Assault Veteran in the unit to give them Intimidating Presence. This makes it so my opponent is a little bit more de-incentivized to come into them because now they're getting uh, Lannister Supremacy with an extra minus one on top of that and an additional wound on, on, on failure. So I think uh, even though my opponent will want to try and shake some of these guys off as they're one of the more less, as they're one of the less threatening units in the list, uh, they're going to be punished quite heavily for for doing so i this unit for sure could be like a flex piece where you, or fle it's the flex points i think where if you wanted to do something a little different you could but for me i am i appreciate the unit existing in terms of holding that zone in the back or maybe presenting themselves forward so they can try and get some more panic tests out so it really is um really like i said it's more of a flexible choice for you if you feel like there's something else that you would rather have in here so moving on to NCUs, I've got 10 points to play around with. And the first one I'm grabbing for is going to be Tyrion Lannister. Uh, for five points, he brings the ability Tactical Mastermind. That states, uh, your maximum tactics hand size increase by plus one, and you start the game with four cards and can draw up to four cards when refilling your hand. Also, once per game, when an opponent plays a tactics card, before resolving that card, you can search your library or library. You can search your tactics deck for a discard or discard pile for one counterplot card, play it, and then shuffle your tactics deck. So I, I have really have a hard time not playing Tyrion Lannister in a lot of my lists where I really am wanting to get to a lot of my cards. Um, Getting access to counterplot on tap is really good for trying to keep Kevin's unit around or trying to keep forwarding this combat deal. We don't want our opponent shredding our units, so we want to stop anything that they could play that could help that happen. And we uh, we don't want to get chunked up with not having access to the cards we want. Like We want predictable maneuvers. We want uh, Wealth of the Rock. Uh, so there's, there's plenty of things out in the base tactics deck we want to also i think uh it can having Tyrion lannister just gives you the extra chance of getting to a third counterplot because you'll be able to fish it from your tech from your discard pile if you happen to get it early so uh Tyrion lannister is a really good uh, is a really strong pick for me in general for any lannister list that likes to rifle through their cards a lot so the final ncu that i'm reaching for is going to be joffrey baratheon lord of the seven kingdoms he brings the ability Might of the Throne that states while Joffrey's on the tactics board, you count as controlling the crown. He also has an influence that states while influencing an enemy, that enemy suffers a plus one wound from failing panic tests. So we have enough reasons in this list to take 
the crown zone or want the crown zone we've got man and more we've got the red cloaks and we've got all the different kickers that we can get on top of our cards this also kind of puts like the pressure on our opponent a little bit to say you know why am i going to take the crown zone when they've got joffrey over here that's just going to have it no matter what so they might stay away from it and leave it as an open zone but then having kevin lannister having kevin lannister's attachment allow his unit to make an attack by taking the crown zone makes it so your opponent's kind of forced into taking a zone that they really don't want to unless they're playing tons of panic shenanigans but i think we've built the list that is somewhat resilient to those panic issues so they're kind of put into a place where if they don't take it they're going to get hit and if they do take it it's almost kind of like a wasted turn for the most part unless they're targeting the uh, Lannister Guardsmen, which, sure, that's fine. They're, they're, they're just there to sit on things anyways. But the other ability that uh, Joffrey has with his influence being able to inflict additional wounds on units from failing panic tests, that's another reason why having Spread Fear and the Lannister Justice uh, fits really well into this list. I know some people might look at me weird with that Clegane Butcher, but being able to inflict a possible three to four extra wounds just from having Joffrey on there uh, means that you're shaving off a rank and getting closer and closer to being able to shred through a unit. Like I think the way this list is kind of tooled together is if your opponent isn't extremely resilient to panic checks, you honestly could get something engaged with Kevin Lannister's unit and likely wipe that unit off the table before Kevin actually has to really activate because you're guaranteed to get an attack for the most part. There's some some shenanigans some armies can pull to stop you from taking the crown or the combat zone in 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 back to back, but. Um, you you can get the extra attacks from the tactic zone you can get the extra panic tests from the other units that you've got and by that time as soon as that final attack comes through like if kevin's grabbing a crown or or a, or the combat zone you shred that unit apart before he even activates so you get to charge off and go do something else so that's kind of the the reason why the list is constructed the way that it is um is that I want to try and get a bunch of damage that happens outside of activation so that I can make this very narrow list. I mean, four combat units and two NCUs is not, you know, the most competitive choice in the universe. But I think I have enough in here to make it feel like the list is doing more work than it has any right to really do. So there's a lot of different ways you can take a Kevin Lannister list. You could decide to take the cavalry out and lose a lot of the attachments to get more boots on the floor, so to speak. But uh, I do like the way this list is pointed. Uh, the thing that's really worth mentioning about this list in general is that uh, I think that it kind of contorts the uh, tactics deck for Lannister a little bit in that uh, we haven't really seen an extremely tactically committed uh, melee commander yet i know that uh that the 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 mountain exists right and he was he is all in on melee but he's very aggressive on melee and not so much adaptable melee where kevin lannister makes sure that you can push some extra advantage and survive long enough to make sure it happens you know the mountain kind of plays with reckless abandon where kevin is very calculated and when you combine that with the lannister's tactics deck you know you can use your your forefinger to flick your opponent down and then your thumb of the tactics deck to kind of hold them down which is really why i like Tyrion lannister in the list is that i can have that access to counterplot when i need it and it makes sure that I'm able to manipulate the game the way that I want to uh, to make sure that I'm forwarding the the combat the way that I want to. I mean, fealty to the crown is really an amazing pick for or is an amazing card to make sure that this list is you know staying healthy and functional considering it throws out a decent amount of panic checks. It really does thread the needle between being extremely combat focused and extremely panic focused. I think like. Uh, it, it just feels like a really well-rounded list. It's kind of the thing that I like to build when, in general, is like, I feel like I could take this to like a local game night, and regardless of what I get play, what I play into, it should be able to function pretty well. Um, and when we think about the a two list pairing situation, uh, having an all comer list and then maybe having your second list teched towards more meta issues uh, is is definitely beneficial here. So am I saying that this Kevin Lannister list is going to take you all the way to the top of whatever kind of tournament you decide to play at at your next big convention? 
I don't know if that's completely the case. I think that it's definitely got legs and could hold its own in an event like that, but against maybe more tuned and focused uh, numbers-based lists instead of quality-based lists, I think you might have some issues. But definitely for a local event or your local game night, uh, this is honestly, I, I, I'm about a half second away from pulling out my, uh, my Lannister re- or my Red Cloaks and starting to paint them for this, for this list so I can take it out next time I get a chance to. But uh, in general, I think it's, it's a fun list. It, it definitely takes a lot of, uh, a lot of neat, th- it takes the Lannisters in a neat direction and utilizes a commander that they really haven't had um, you know, like this kind of theme hasn't really some hasn't been something they've had access to where you're getting unconditional combat and uh and and some good control elements too. I think it really makes your opponent think a lot and uh can surprisingly take out a, a large number of bodies that your opponent might not be expecting you to just from combat alone and not even thinking about melee. So let me know in the comments section below how you're building Kevin Lannister lists and, you know, how you might approach him a little differently. Um, also, I'm, I'm interested to see what other kind of commanders people are wanting to hear, wanting to listen to me talk about because, you know, there's a lot of new commanders out there with all these hero boxes that hit at once. And we haven't really gone over a lot of the Greyjoy commanders out there. So I'm interested to see what people are thinking about it. So let me know uh, your thoughts and opinions in the comments section on this video. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to making the next one for you.